my name is Sketch. I'm an urban artist and graffiti writer slash muralist and I'm from Innsbruck. Graffiti plays a huge role in my life. To be honest, I wouldn't even know what I would be doing without graffiti. I'm of course conscious of the fact that graffiti is not exactly law conform. There is certainly an area where it gets morally questionable. I paint kind of a wide variety of places, but there's a lot of stuff that I do not touch even though it's abandoned. Myself, I prefer basically anything with big empty wall space. Of course, atmosphere is important, like I love the exploring aspect as well. That's why I specifically enjoy painting in abandoned places. Urbex and graffiti does combine pretty naturally. Like a walk around an abandonment is usually pretty inspiring, so you just take that energy and transfer it to the wall. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified when we upload new content. Right now we're in northern Italy at an abandoned ammunition depot. Two reasons why I'm here. I'm here to first explore and second create urban art. Looking for a wall inside an abandoned building is pretty much the same as just going through, exploring, taking pictures. Like first we usually scope out the entire place, like look where the best space might be and what the opportunities are. I do pick my walls very carefully. Like I wouldn't paint over anything that has architectural value. And if I have a really atmospheric spot, I wouldn't just paint something that's, that totally disrupts. I would rather try to kind of make it work and uh, fit into the whole aesthetic of it. So that's basically my uh, personal rule book there. Nowadays it's usually, it's mostly freestyle, what I paint, which is kind of ironic because, because of my name's being Sketch. It usually involves first asking the question, where's the piece gonna be? And taking in the atmosphere and see how the place inspires you and use that to create some kind of connection to the wall that you paint on. I'm lucky enough to call it my job and also my hobby. And I paint pretty much multiple times every week. The job portion of my work is what I usually refer to as muralism. What that means is I paint large commissioned murals, five to 10 meters tall for various companies. Not only do you see them yourself in your day-to-day -day life, but also other people see them every day. You kind of put them out there to be judged by everyone who walks by, and it's quite interesting to get the, the different opinions on them. Your mentality is gonna be so different when you paint a legal wall. You know, you got time, you can drink a couple beers, chat a little, and when painting illegally, you really have to be like laser focused on what you're gonna do. And it's hard to even compare the two, even though you're technically doing the same thing. The thrill and the adventure of the whole thing, that's a big motivator as well. That's just something you don't get when you're doing a commission work.
the urbex community and the graffiti community, that's a, there are two scenes where there is a lot of overlap, but there's not always the greatest understanding. Documenting abandoned places, taking pictures, is obviously an art form, just like graffiti is obviously an art form. The thing is that the, these places really belong to neither of us, I would say. Some urbexers don't really see graffiti as a good thing. Other graffiti writers, they just really see it as a playground. So me being in the middle of it all, I can really see both sides, but it's all a matter of perspective, to be honest. If I was just painting normally, like I do out in the street, I wouldn't really have to go to an abandoned place at all. So I feel like if I'm here, I do kind of owe it to the place and this location to create some kind of context. Many people may not notice, but this whole area here used to be like a very, very crucial area in, in the wartime. And as such, it has a lot of bunkers, which are kind of like hidden in plain sight. Like if there's a fake looking rock here, there's a good chance that it's a bunker. But to me, they always kind of seem like, like these strange, weird hidden eyes in the hills that you don't really know about. But once you notice them, they're everywhere and they kind of invoke this uneasy feeling of being watched. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to replicate basically with this piece. There's also some little visual references like the bullet holes or the camouflage texture, which is obviously a connection to this being a military ammo depot. There is certainly a negative connotation to the word graffiti. If you call it street art, it's all good. <laughs> like that's kind of the, the weird dynamic there. Today, the generally accepted opinion is if it's big, nice and colorful, it's good. If it's a tag, it's shit. And that I just do not agree with. A tag also can be amazing just as much as a nice, big, colorful piece can still be bad. I would invite everyone to kind of take a second look and rethink that because it's, it is not that simple. I can see where it comes from because graffiti is obviously rebellious and disruptive, but it's also kind of a sign of free minds. That in itself to me is, even if the tag looks like shit, which it often does, that in itself to me is a beautiful thing. We know that this is a very controversial topic. Many urban explorers, and not only the die-hard ones, like their abandonments clean. For them, graffiti is nothing more but vandalism, and they want to preserve these spots in the way they were left behind. What we, of course, can totally understand. But now you have learned the opinion of Crazy Mr. Sketch, who is an urban explorer himself, but also a professional graffiti writer. He isn't really into the illegal stuff though. He only paints legal pieces or in abandoned buildings, which is yeah, like a grey area in his opinion, since these places belong to no one anymore. He's traveling all around the world to pursue this passion. If you like his work, you can see more of it on Instagram. We added the link to his profile to our video description. We would like to start a discussion about graffiti in abandoned places. For us, both of them belong together in a way. They always did. An abandoned place is literally no man's land. In such a site, you kind of unplug from society and existing structures. Graffiti is part of that rebellious and anarchic attitude. And it's also great to see when a forgotten place can serve a new purpose. For example, being a canvas for art. The murals and graffiti you can find here are often bizarre and support the atmosphere of the places. 
And to put it simply, it is urban decay combined with antisocial behavior and severe disorder, which is literally the definition of the broken windows theory, which inspired us to do this whole channel, of course. Um, but what do you think? What's your opinion on the whole topic? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. We were dealing with this topic already before we even started the channel. And only one year ago we joined eBook, which is a German street art festival that is taking place at abandoned places every year. Here professional artists fill a derelict industrial site with life for one last time. We shot our most important and elaborate documentary at this event. If you haven't watched it yet, you really need to catch up on it. You will see it in our end card in just a second. But before we get there, we would like to know if you got any ideas for more video reports like this one. In the future, we want to produce more documentaries and um, portraits about people who are involved or somehow connected to abandoned places. In addition to our normal videos, of course. Um, and for example, we always wanted to follow ghost hunters. So if you got any ideas, please share them with us and see you in the comments.